Praise the Lord, thank you, God. I'm Pastor Bruce Byers, senior pastor here at the Good Samaritan Missionary Baptist Church, where we believe in building the church through the people. We thank you for joining us, amen, this morning as we go into our Sunday school lesson, which we taught by our very own, amen, Minister Cleo Mosley, amen. Before we get started, we would that you join, each, join with us, amen, in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, how we thank you for your tender mercies and loving kindness, the many blessings bestowed upon us, allowing us to arise this morning clothed in our right mind with a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you for your word, O oh God, that you continue to feed us, O oh God, with our word, O oh God, that we want no more. Now, Father, help us, O oh God, as we go in your word to rightly divide the word of truth, to hide it in our heart that we might not sin against thee. And then, Father, in the midst of all you do, reaching out, O oh God, touching your people, healing, leading and guiding God, we'll be ever so careful, ever so humble to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus, we do pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as Minister Cleo Moses comes down and leads us in our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is a continuation of the one we had last Sunday where we're in the book of John, John the sixth chapter. Um, and the title of today's lesson is Jesus' Hard Saying. And our lesson text comes from John the sixth chapter, verses 53 and 54, and then verses 60 through 71. Um, our golden text for today is, and he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. John chapter 6, verse 65. I'm going to read our lesson scripture in the entirety, and then we'll go back and, and discuss um, the scriptures. And it reads, starting at John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. We skip down to verse 60, and it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this, does this offend you? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. But Jesus knew from his beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye go away? Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and we are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he is, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Now, when I was reading chapter, John chapter 6, what I was reading is Jesus tried to let his disciples and the people that were following him know exactly who he was. Sometimes we, we have to describe ourselves in detail for people to understand us. And I feel like that's what Jesus was trying to do, was to describe himself in detail so that people would know him. And then Jesus said unto him, verse 53, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in me. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. When I read this, I'm thinking, why was it so hard for them to understand Jesus? Why did that, that statement that he made throw them into a, a loop that make them question what he was saying? And then I realized, just like many of us, you can't discern spiritual when you're thinking in the natural. Amen. Jesus was speaking in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. They were thinking in the natural. That's why when he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That's why they had a hard time understanding. That's why people today still have a hard time understanding who Jesus is because we have spirit, uh, uh, physical eyes, mm -hmm. worldly eyes, mm -hmm. but we don't have our spiritual eyes and mind open. Yeah, yeah. And that's all Jesus was trying to do open their spiritual eyes and minds so that they could receive of the spiritual. And he said, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. So if somebody says this will give you eternal life, would you not be interested in partaking of it? Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's going to give you eternal life. But Amen. instead it caused confusion. And he said, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? We don't always want to hear the truth, the spiritual. We can listen to all kinds of gossip, but we don't want to hear the spiritual truth. Amen. And that's all Jesus was trying to give them, was the spiritual truth. And verse 61 said, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured, he said unto them, does this offend you? Many people are offended by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Many people are offended by those who carry the word of God because it's not what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. But we should not become offended by the word of God because the word of God is what is going to save us. Amen. We, we don't become offended and those who carry the word of God, they should be speaking the truth of God, not what they want to say, mm -hmm. not what the people want to hear, Amen. but what the truth of the word of God is. Amen. And then we go to verse 62, and it says, What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. if, when you read all of a little bit more of, of John, you understand that the church, the temple, the people in the temple, the Pharisees, the scribes, the priests, they did not appreciate Jesus' teachings. They did not appreciate his teaching. And in you will also find in many instances they were looking for something to condemn Jesus mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And here he says in verse 62 and 63, what if you see me ascend where I came from? They again, they have their natural eye and their natural mind trying to, and they're not trying to perceive the spiritual. And he said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We, even today in this 21st century, we have to start thinking spiritually. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't think spiritually unless we know who God is. We can't know who God is unless we know his word. And then we have to accept the word for what it is, not for what we want it to be, Amen. for what it is. Amen. So when it says, thou shall not kill, we have to say, thou shall not kill. Uh -huh. Accept the word for where it is, because he's telling us the flesh profits nothing. No. Think about the flesh. We commit sins in the flesh. The 
flesh does not forgive sins. Mm -hmm. It is Jesus, the spirit, that forgives sin. So that's why he's saying the flesh profit is nothing. Yes, we can work with our physical bodies, but our physical bodies need to be governed by our spiritual mind. That's the only way we can overcome sin is when our physical body is governed by our spiritual mind. Mm -hmm. Then verse 64 says, But there are some of you that believe not, mm -hmm. for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. My, my, my. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. He knew who would not believe him, mm -hmm. and he knew who would betray him. In our dealings with people sometimes, we can, we can sometimes get a feel of who is for us and who's against us. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Jesus had that feeling, but Jesus had a little bit more. He yes, had sir. divine knowledge. Uh -huh. He had all knowledge. We have to depend on our, our feelings, and sometimes the Spirit will reveal to us who's for us and who's against yes, us. Yes, yes. And that's why we need to know the work of the Spirit so we can listen to the Spirit when it speaks to us. Yeah. And when that Spirit says, go left and not right, we have to learn to listen to the Spirit. He said, he knew who would betray him. Mm -hmm. When you think about betrayal, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other ways to betray somebody than the way Judas did mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus knew who was going to betray him. But how often do we betray people? How often do we say or do things that betray someone who might have trusted us for whatever reason? And, you know, we a betrayal is, is something as simple as, oh, I'll be there. I, I promise you I'll be there. <laughs> when you have no intention. And Come you on. don't show Come up. On. That's a betrayal. That's a betrayal. And we have to examine our actions. Are we like some of these people who were following Jesus that were following him, but not for the right reason? Mm. Because he said he knew who would believe and who would believe not. Mm. How many people have you encountered that say they believe and then their actions? don't support their Amen. words. Amen. Amen. And that's important for us as Christians. We've got to make sure that our actions yes, yes. support our words. As they say, you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. You don't say one thing and do something else. Mm -hmm. Then verse 65, and he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto, the, unto me, except it were given unto him unto him of my father. Mm -hmm. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's verse 65 and 66. When he says, no man can come unto me except it was given unto him by the father. Mm -hmm. Jesus is letting them know that he is connected to the father. Mm -hmm. The father helps to determine who's drawn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He can draw us to Jesus. The Father gives the Son what the Son needs. Mm -hmm. Just when you think about that in terms of our, our earthly fathers, they know what we need. You know, sometimes we want one thing and Mom and Daddy said, no, you don't need that. We don't think they know what they're talking about, but because as, as parents, they know what we need. God knew who Jesus needed to support him, and he drew those people unto him, just like the disciples were drawn to Jesus. He, he, didn't, he didn't go through an elaborate four-hour presentation to convince them to follow him. He just spoke to them, and most of his disciples started following him. When he said, you know, cast aside your nets and follow me, they threw those nets aside and followed Jesus. No long presentation, no four or five hours to convince them to follow him because the Father drew him, drew them to him. And then verse 66 and, and 
From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. How is it that we give up so easily? Come on, come on. Sometimes we give up before we have, we even know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's true. But when you hear something that's uncomfortable, you know, you, you're following Jesus and then he tells you you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So do you just throw everything down and say, I'm not going to follow him anymore. Not. He's not talking like I want him. Like I want him to talk. Mm -hmm. Come on. See, we we let our personal feelings and yeah. our personal preferences get in the way yeah. of what we need to be doing for God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How often do you see that happen mm. in the, in our churches and Come in on. homes? Because it's not my way. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna do it. Amen. So here. In my, in my mind's eye, I saw all of these people following Jesus and eager to hear what Jesus had to say. Mm -hmm. And he said something that didn't sit well with the, oh, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. We do that same thing. Come on, come on. We do that same thing. People will leave churches they've been in for years. Come on. Because once somebody said something that they took offense with. Yes. Who are you following? Are you following that person? Come on, come on. Are you following Jesus? Come on. See, that, that's why we have to know who it is we are following. Mm -hmm. All of these people, some of them will follow Jesus. Because now you got to remember that what we're talking about today occurred after he had fed the 5,000. Mm -hmm. You know, they saw him do this, and I'm going to see what else he's going to do. I'm going to see if he's going to give us another banquet. Uh-huh. So they were not following him for the right reason. Come on. What is your reason for following Jesus? Not much. That was a question um, years ago somebody had um, mentioned. I was in a workshop and they asked that question. What is your reason for following Jesus? Yes. Yes. We all need to think about that. Mm -hmm. If we haven't already, what is your reason? For following Jesus. Come on, come on. Is it because you've heard he performed miracles? Right. Is it because it says, I am the way, the truth, and the light? Mm -hmm. What is your reason for following Jesus? Mm -hmm. That's good. Or is it just to see what he's going to do next? Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't satisfy my curiosity, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. How often do people give up on Jesus? We give up before we have a chance to develop a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. it, you know, a relationship takes time. And if you're going to walk with Jesus, you need to develop that relationship. You don't just come in one day and say, oh, I'm going to follow him. You get to know that person. Yeah. So the only way you get to know him is you got to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you understand why you are following Jesus. Verse 67 through 69, it says, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, mm -hmm. Will you go away? Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Mm. Ooh, Simon Peter. And we believe and are sure that yes. thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now we can talk about Peter. Mm -hmm. We can say, you know, he had a big mouth mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, I've heard people describe Peter in a lot of different ways. But one of the things is Peter spoke truth. He might not have said it in the most tactful way, mm -hmm. but he spoke truth. When he said, whom shall we go to? Mm -hmm. Peter realized that Jesus was the best thing yes. and the best person to be with. Mm -hmm. Whom shall we go to? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Yes. Acknowledging that Jesus had the words of eternal life. Yes. Mm -hmm. Peter realized that I don't have all the words that you have, and I want to hear as many of them as I can. So he's, he's 
understandably say, where should we go? And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Now you got to remember, I have allergies and I'm always driven. Um, you got to remember that they didn't have the book like we have the book. Mm -hmm. You know, we got we we have the whole story. They only had the Old Testament mm -hmm. and what the prophets had said to guide them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. They knew that a Savior was coming. Mm -hmm. Some of them had ideas about this grand military person. They didn't really know what who they were looking for, but they know that the promised Messiah was coming. Mm -hmm. Some of them had the foresight to recognize Jesus and want to follow Jesus. Peter was one of those people. Amen. It said, and we believe that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. So if Peter could see that, what was wrong with those that turned back and walk with him no more. My, my, my. Mm. They didn't, they obviously did not realize that he had the words to eternal life, mm. or they didn't believe that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm. How there are times when people will follow just to be a part of the crowd. Come on, come on. And I used to tell my daughter, I used to tell her, don't. Don't just follow people to be following them. Know why you are following them. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Don't just want to be a part of a crowd. Mm -hmm. You need to know why you are following. So if I'm just, I just want to be a part of the crowd. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what he's talking about. I'm just a part of the crowd. Then when the something is said or done that you don't, don't like, then yeah, you're going to drift away. You're going to leave that. And that's what happened to those that walked away and did not follow Jesus anymore. Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, are you strong enough in your belief that if you hear somebody say something that doesn't sound right, are you going to walk away from Jesus? Or are you going to go and dig a little deep and search the scriptures? Sometimes if the person is speaking and saying things that are not lining up with the word of God, we need to walk away. But don't walk away just because they said something that's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, if they call your sin into question, you don't walk away because of that, because they're trying to help you grow stronger mm -hmm. when they help you to see what's going on in your life that's not lining up with the word of God. Jesus answered them. In verse 70 it says, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Mm. Hmm. Mm. Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Mm -hmm. I often wonder, you know, Jesus said he knew um, that there was one who was, should betray him that was among the twelve. How do you continue to interact with someone that you know what they're going to do? to harm you. Mm -hmm. He knew who it was. It wasn't just, oh, it's one of the 12. He knew which one of the 12 it was that was going to betray him. Yes. But he still allowed him to walk with him. Mm -hmm. Was he trying to change his mind? Mm -hmm. There's nothing in scripture that says that he was trying to change Judas's mind. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, said, and it's not in our lesson, that I come to do the will of the Father which sent me. Yes. So if the will of the Father which sent me is that I have to walk with one that I know is going to betray me, I'm going to walk with that person. Mm -hmm. I'm one of these people that when I read scripture, I try to make it practical 
mm -hmm. to everyday life. Mm -hmm. I don't read it as a history book. Mm -hmm. I read it as a book that changes lives today. And when I think about that, when I thought about that, that's what came to my mind is that will I be able or would I be able to continue to walk with somebody, mm -hmm. talk with them, mm -hmm. work with them, mm -hmm. if I knew that they were going to betray me? If I knew, and we don't call it betray now, if I knew they were setting me up mm -hmm. for the fall, Amen. Amen. would I be able to continue to walk and work and talk with that person? Mm -hmm. Jesus is our example of how to handle it. Amen. You treat them just like you treat anybody yeah, else. else. Amen. It's hard. Yes. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But that's our example that's in the book. Example. That's our example from Jesus. Mm -hmm. When we look at our lesson, Jesus is hard saying, this is not the only one that you're going to find in Scripture. Mm -hmm. But when they didn't understand back in verse 53 when it says, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Mm -hmm. Mama. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. They were thinking literally. Mm -hmm. But what for us, what it means is if we don't partake in the ceremonial um, eating of the bread and drinking of the wine. We have to go a little bit further over in John when we get to the, the upper room scene and the Last Supper to really fully understand this. But Jesus was preparing them to let them know this is something you're going to have to do. Scripture prepares us for things to come. And this lesson, the hard saying of Jesus, is preparing us for the things that we have to deal with in life. Mm -hmm. The things that we might not often encounter, but when it hits you, God will have prepared you for it. Mm -hmm. The hard saying the practical points of our lesson, it says just as food is nourishing to our bodies, mm -hmm. so faith in Jesus is nourishing to our souls. Yes. We have to believe in Jesus, not half-heartedly, mm -hmm. but wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Wholeheartedly, we have to believe that he is. And he did those things that we read about in the book. Mm -hmm. That even though he left earth 200 thousand years ago, or however long it was, Amen. his life is still fresh and living. Mm. The second practical point says we know we have eternal life if we have truly put our faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Truly put your faith in Jesus. And that's the kind of faith that doesn't move when the wind blows. Come on, come on. We can't have the kind of faith that I can believe that he'll he'll get me a job, but I don't believe he'll take care of my sick mother. Mm -hmm. We can't have that kind of faith. We gotta believe that he can do all things. Practical mm -hmm. point number three says that those who reject Jesus do not have faith that what the Bible teaches us is true. Mm -hmm. I believe that his word is true. And that's what you have to, we have to believe that what the Bible teaches us is true. Scientists have tried to disprove the Bible. Scientists have tried to disprove the Bible. But what we see that in all their attempts to disprove the Bible, they have proven it. They have confirmed that what's in the Bible is true. Isn't that that, to me, that's wonderful. When you try to prove something isn't true, but you prove it is true instead. Practical point four says, the teachings of Jesus are life to our souls, but they must be accepted by faith. Mm. Um, I think it was James Cleveland that sung the song, 
Where is your faith? Mm -hmm. Where is your faith? That's another question we need to ask ourselves. Where is your faith? And if I got the wrong author, y'all forgive me. I listen to music and I don't always remember who's singing what. But where is your faith? That's something. Where is your faith? Is your faith in Jesus, is it strong enough to withstand the storms? But if we never question ourselves, we don't know whether we'll stand or not. Practical point number five says every person must determine personally whether he or she will follow Jesus or reject him. Mm -hmm. It can't be mama's decision or daddy's decision. It can't, you can't make that decision based on your brother or your sister. It's your personal decision. Mm -hmm. That's why you can see people who grew up, grew up in the same household mm -hmm. turn out so different from yeah. one another. Yeah. I made a decision to follow um, the teachings of my mother and father, and I reject and the other one over here rejected. Mm -hmm. That's how it happens, because God gives us freedom of choice, and we can have the same foundation, but we take different routes when we start to branch off. And then the last one says, Jesus alone has words of eternal life and can offer salvation to sinners. That's what verse 60, 68 through 71 was telling us. Jesus has the words to eternal life. Do we listen to them? Do we accept them? It is really good when you, at least for me, when I can read what Jesus said. And the encouragement that you get when you read his words But if you don't read it, you don't have that encouragement. You know, listening to the preacher is one thing, but there's nothing like you taking the time mm -hmm. to read the word for yourself and have the Holy Spirit reveal to you what the word says and what it means to you. My, my teaching style is usually to ask questions, but does anybody have a question? You know, I know you're, you're listening, but question, have, ask questions and have discussions about the word of God. I don't mean arguments, I said discussions. There's a difference. Amen. And we gain understanding when we can discuss the word of God and have it explained to us. We can ask questions or we can express our views on the word of God. Because God gives all of us an ear to understand. And we don't want to be like the followers that walked away from Jesus. We don't want to walk away, so we want to get a firm foundation. We want to be like Peter when he said, I know that you have the words of eternal life and that you are Christ, the son of the living God. We want to be able to do that. And we do that through the study of God's word. And we do that through allowing his word to penetrate into our minds and our souls. That we can allow the Holy Spirit to come in and confirm and reveal to us what God has to say to us. Pastor? Amen. God bless amen. you. Let's amen. give the Lord a hand. Clap a praise. Amen. Clap a praise. Amen. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you for this wonderful and glorious day in which we are to partake in your word. We ask, God, that you would continue to open our spiritual eyes, O oh God, that we might receive the word of God in our hearts. We ask, O oh God, that even when we don't understand, give us that saving faith as Peter had, as the other 12 disciples, 11 disciples had, God, that we might trust you even when we don't understand. When life crisis comes appalling, falling upon us, O oh God, when things don't quite go our way, help us, O oh God, to trust in you, to hold your word true in our hearts, and to walk in the things of God. Now, Father, I pray that you would just bless Everyone under the sound of my voice, those that are here in the sanctuary and those who are at home, oh God, in streaming land, 
Oh, Father, that you would just encamp your angels round about them, keep them safe from danger, seen as well as unseen. Help us to study to show ourselves the proved in the God, working that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And let not hurt harm us in an accident of danger befall us. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God say amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Join us.